Hello, Mary O'Malley with the seventh video on my new book, What's in the Way is the Way. And now we're getting to the heart of the matter. And I think the best way to describe that is imagine yourself on a warm summer evening at an outdoor symphony. The stars are out. The music is wonderful. And all of a sudden, a few rows ahead of you in the audience, a man stands up and starts playing the kazoo and hitting cymbals. What happens to your experience of the symphony? <laughs> of course, your attention is pulled from the symphony and focuses on this man. For the rest of the symphony, you hate him, you want to get rid of him, you feel sorry for yourself, your whole experience of the symphony has been you know, destroyed, you, know, you figure out how you can murder him. That is what has happened to us. We were all open to the symphony of life when we were very young. And then slowly and surely we closed off and we pulled ourselves up and out and we got caught in our heads in this storyteller that's based on fear and it's narrating our world. That is our suffering. So imagine, you know, you're... Uh, this storyteller that struggles with everything. It doesn't like the shape of your thighs and so you buy all of these different you know, exercise things and you go on all sorts of diets and you uh, go to plastic surgery and it's never quite enough. Or imagine that you are at a stoplight and you're going to be late for an appointment and the storyteller starts saying, oh my God, oh my God, something really bad is going to happen if I'm late. Or you're at a, a meeting at work, you give a great presentation, and you think, okay, that, that was pretty good. And then on the drive home, the storyteller starts saying, oh, why did you say this? <gasps> you should have said that. Oh, my God, what are they going to think of me? That is our suffering. That is the man playing the kazoo and playing the cymbal that we have gotten caught in this very small, narrow part of ourselves called the storyteller. How do you unhook from it? How do you come back to the symphony of life no matter what is happening? And that is through the phenomenal power of curiosity. What do I mean by that? You have a natural inquisitiveness. It was really here when you were young, and slowly and surely it got shut down. And our whole life began to be narrated by this storyteller. But we longed to have that experience of really fully being engaged with life, to not manage it so much, but to be here, to engage with it right here. And yet we're not used to doing that. And in the, in the chapter I put uh, the 1,000 door uh, analogy and imagine you're in a prison, this storyteller, and there's a thousand doors in the walls to get out and you try 999 of them many many times and each time you try a door one of three things happens. First of all the doors lock, second of all you open the door and it's a brick wall, third of all you open the door and you walk through it and you only walk into the same room you've been in. Now there is a 1,000th door, and it's over there in the corner, a little tiny door, and it's got a word written on the front of it, and from your vantage point, you can say, see the first two letters, and it's H-E, and you know that that's the door to help. So you try all the other doors many, many times, and then you finally say, well, my God, hell can't be any worse than this, and you go down and you crouch in front of this little door, and what's written on it is H-E-R-E. Here, that's the power of curiosity. It will bring you here. And the amazing thing about curiosity is you think, oh, this is not very powerful. Look at it, it's a little tiny door, you know. But you stick a finger in, the door begins to expand. <laughs> and then you arm it, and then it expands even more. The more you're curious, you begin to open back up again. And the amazing thing is that you never walk out of this prison. It just dissolves through the power of your curiosity. So, how do we do that? First of all, give yourself the gift of one thing you do every day for at least five minutes 
in just curiosity. That means actually experiencing what you are experiencing. So let's take your morning tea, you know, you take it out on the porch, you actually smell the tea. You actually feel the warmth of the cup on your hand, the warmth of the tea as it goes into your body. You close your eyes and you hear the symphony of sounds all around you. In that moment, you are engaging with life rather than being lost in a story about life. But of course, the muscle of your attention is very flaccid. And so, you know, after a couple of minutes, then you'll start thinking about a meeting you have later on that day. And you may be gone for a couple of minutes. No judgment and you notice you're gone and you bring it back into the full experience of this living moment. Now, you'll be amazed if you choose to do this. The mind will say one morning I don't have time or it doesn't, that doesn't do anything or I don't know how to do it or I don't do it good enough. That's this fear-based mind that is always struggling with life. That's the kazoo. So give yourself that gift and you'll find that even going away is okay because you'll be strengthening the muscle of your attention by bringing it back. And the more you strengthen the muscle of your attention, the more you'll be able to begin to see the spells that make up your storyteller. The judgment, the self-judgment, the shame, the fear, the irritation, the loneliness, the sense of being all alone. And you'll be able to begin to see them. You'll be able to look and unhook from these spells that were just stories that were created in your mind before you were six. And the more you do that, the more you'll be able to come to the really core spells. The spells that you have run away from your whole life that have thus managed you from underneath your everyday awareness. It's like the spell that says, oh my God, I've had a difficult day and if I don't eat the thing or drink the thing or smoke the thing or watch the thing or buy the thing, I will die. And remember... I gained huge amounts of weights and, and drank all sorts of alcohol and took all sorts of pills, all because I was trying to get away from the really deep spells inside of me. And I especially overate. And when I was able to be with that sense of, oh my God, I will die if I don't eat this thing. And to stand with it and see it just dissolve. It was amazing. And I also discovered this that as I began to look and unhook, I came to dread. Well, that's just, just horrible, massive yuck, you know, in my belly. And dread is the uh, experience of something really horrible is going to happen, and it's going to happen because I have done something wrong. And I can still remember the night that I unhooked from it, that I woke up in the middle of the night just enshrouded in dread, permeated in dread and my first thought was oh my god I need to go eat something and then curiosity kicked in very scary to go towards these spells and that's what we'll be looking at in the rest of the book that how you can uh, look to unhook from even the deepest spells inside of you and it was just amazing to actually go and have my attention, my curiosity, and my immediate experience together. And the energy that was bound up in the dread opened up, and I opened back up into the meadow of joy. So be gentle. Don't go too far too fast. Be willing to give yourself the gift. One thing that you do, one simple thing, isn't it amazing that you may not even do that? because you're so identified with this struggling storyteller. But if you really want to come back to life, give yourself the gift of five minutes a day. And then in the next video, we will look at how you can do this as you move throughout your day so you too can learn how to relate to this struggling storyteller rather than from it so you too 
can come back to the joy of being here for life.